we got to see what we got. It, there was one play that was complete to Cruz. It ended up in a fumble. It ended up in a penalty. At least that looked positive. But if Victor's one of your big playmakers, you got to put the ball in his hands. All right, but before, yeah, of course. But before you, well, you know your football. You know your football. <laughs> but before you push that panic button, Peyton Manning, when he came back from his neck surgeries in preseason of 2012, after two games, was 20 for 30 for 221 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions. He had a pretty good 2012. So that's why I say it's still a little bit too early. If they can play that fifth preseason game, there's still time. But like you said, it's getting late early. What about and it's the, getting late early for this segment too. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. What about the Giants' pressure? Is there any pressure? You know, all your buddies are gone. O.C.'s gone. Tuck's gone. Strahan's gone. Where is the pressure going to come from? And even if the secondary is as good as we think, can they hold up if there's not enough? Andrew Luck did what he wanted to, and he scrambled the other times. Uh, well, they need JPP to have a monster year. He's got to be the monster of the Meadowlands again. And Kiwanuka has looked good. And they're counting on DeMontre Moore to be that other pass rusher. And JPP should have a, with that secondary, you know, they've copied the Legion of Boom. With that secondary, even though Prince of Mukamara now has a groin injury, which may necessitate Trumaine McBride or Walter Thurman, the slot corner, moving outside. But with that secondary, they've got enough depth and enough playmakers where JPP should have a double digit sack year. So you know your stuff too. You're showing some good depth charts. I'm reading off those stuff. key cards. Yeah. <laughs> Giants were down 26 nothing. They came back to win the game 27. They won the game. I fell asleep. Do you make anything of something like that? They've won three no, games. No. And, and you got a kid named Corey Washington out of nowhere who's got touchdown pass in each of the I'm, three I'm games. I'm glad you mentioned him from Newberry College. You're, you're a booster there, right? Yes. Six foot four, Plaxico Burris esque, red zone target, has caught three touchdowns in three games. Why not? How's this for an idea? What do you, tell me what you think of this. Why not have Eli Manning play with him early and throw him a touchdown? All the guy does is catch touchdown passes. You need size anyway. It's yeah. so much better for a quarterback like Eli. Think back to Plaxico. You could throw the ball to somebody who's not a small guy. You know. Well, you know and Reuben Randall hasn't shown up yet, and the tight end spot is a wall. Although Adrian Robinson did do some things finally in the fourth quarter, but. Corey, love the kid. Corey Washington, the kid believes he belongs and is showing he belongs. Have Eli, have him play with Eli. Can we move on to the Jets no, now? No, I'm not can ready I, to can move I grab on. my stuff? You were in, uh, you were at Paul Brown Stadium. You watched this Jet defense get torched in this game by Andy Dalton, who you called Andy somebody. Andy Montana. Andy Montana, that's right. Andy Montana. He was 8 for 8 in the game for 144 yards. The $100 million contract extension looks like it makes sense. What happened to this Jets secondary, especially on the corners? Well, what happened is one of their corners, Antonio Allen, is a safety. And Kyle Wilson, a slot corner, was a former number one pick, but you'd never know it. Uh, even though Rex Ryan is defiant in his defense of these guys because John Idzik did not go to the corner store. And when uh, McDougal, the rookie third round pick, went down, and Milner went down, and uh, who was the other one that went down? Come on, let me see. Let me see Milner if you did your will be back. Let's not worry about him. Oh, oh, Dimitri Patterson is oh, on the good shelf. Good call by you. There's, there's one you picked out. Yeah. But see? you still have Antonio Allen. You've got Ellis Langster as your starters now. That's not what you, no. what you bargained for. No, but you know what? The, the Jets should play, pay close attention to the Giants in this Snoopy Bowl Friday night because the Giants are, have tremendous depth at corner. There's this kid, Charles James, who's fighting for a corner spot, for a roster spot. The Jets could use this guy if, if the Giants got him. You know what they say about preseason? You're not only fighting for a job in your own team, you're auditioning for the rest of the league. That's exactly what you just said. They never say that. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, they do say that. I've never heard so, that before. So Rex is defiant, and you say, leave him be? Or did you fight back yesterday and say, no, this defense needs to figure something out because the front seven is very good? The front seven is very good, but when the front seven doesn't get pressure, that secondary is going to be exposed. So, uh, interesting, Jason, uh, Jason Babin got more snaps than Quinton Copels. Now, I think that may be a message, a motivating tool by Rex Ryan, who needs a breakout season from Copels. He hasn't, he hasn't delivered. He's former number one pick. The Jets, Idzik picked him. The Jets picked him, not Idzik, sorry. The Jets picked him over Chandler Jones. 
hmm. of the Patriots. Right now, that's looking like a bad mistake. Geno Smith, what were your impressions? I thought he showed command, presence, a lot, a lot more comfortable than he was as a rookie. He knows when to run, when to tuck it in, and he's the quarterback. There's no doubt about it. Michael Vick played with the backups. The question I have about Geno is, what happens if, during the season, he begins to deteriorate? They're expecting him to take the next step. You know, Vic is there waiting in the I'm, wings. I'm not, don't interrupt me, Bruce. <laughs> Vic is there waiting in the wings. Good point. But um, if, if Gino starts 0 and 3 or 1 and 4, no question. It's going to be. I know where you're going to be on Mondays if that happens. Gino correct. was 10 for 13, 98 yards. He also ran four times for 20. That was a pretty good showing uh, considering what happened to the defense. What else do you want to talk about with the Jets? You've got the floor. Is this team a playoff team? This team will be like probably 24 other teams in the league, anywhere from 8-8 eight and eight to 10-6. And, and you could say the same about the Giants. It's so important. It's so... The quarterback has to play well, and they have to stay healthy. Those are the two ingredients to make a playoff run. If, if Geno Smith can take that next step, the Jets will be a playoff team. If Eli Manning can do better than one for nine for six yards, which I know he will, then the Giants, the expectations around the Giants are every year are the Super Bowl. You know, around the Jets, the hope is the Super Bowl. Around the Giants, it's expectation. So and, it's going to be an interesting you know, year. Jerry, Jerry Reese spent money like a drunken sailor in the offseason, and they do not, the Giants, Coughlin has talked about starting fast, but the problem is, with that offense in disarray right now, they're going to have a tough, tough time starting fast. Well, kind of like we did in this segment. I've got to close fast, because otherwise we're going to lose the rest of the time for our show. Serbs, thanks for coming in. That's it? That's it. It's midnight. What am I going to do now? That's Steve Serby, columnist for the New York Post, oh, and author of the best-selling book, LT Over the Edge. Coming up next, we go for the pros to the college ranks. Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood is in the house. But first, it's time for the Verizon Fios Fast Connection of the Week. And what a performance by Monet Davis on Friday at the Little League World Series. The 13-year-old young lady from Philly dominated the boys from Nashville, tossing a two-hit shutout and striking out eight. She's the first female to pitch a shutout at the Little League World Series. And that's the Fios Fast Connection of the Week. Introducing Verizon Fios, Quantum TV, redefining what TV can be. That's powerful. Live from Studio 3C in Rockefeller Plaza, you're watching Sports Final on NBC for New York. Here's your host, Bruce Beck. A new era has begun at Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights begin playing the Big Ten this year with their first conference game slated for September 13th against Penn State at High Point Solution Stadium. The man guiding the Scarlet Knights is a local product. He hails from Bayside, played his high school ball at St. Francis Prep in Queens, and was captain of his Iona College team. He's now in his third season as the head coach of RU. It's a pleasure to welcome Kyle Flood to Sports Final. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on tonight. A little bit of a, an escape for training camp, but just for a couple hours because we got a lot of work still to do. You like when you're talked about as the local guy, somebody who's from the area, and this is his roots? I love it. I love it. This is the, the part of the country that I was born and raised in, went to school here, have worked really most of my career in the Northeast, in the New York City metropolitan area. And I love it. My entire family is, is from this area. So is my wife. So it's, a, it's home, and it feels like home. Did you ever think you'd be coaching in the Big Ten? <laughs> I, I did. I did. And, you know, when all the, the turmoil was happening in college football, it was hard for me to foresee a situation where a, a top 25 university nationally, top 50 globally, a school that had been to eight bowl games in nine years, uh, would be left out. And for us, the Big Ten was our first choice. And it really it feel, it feels right. What about the flavor of the Big Ten? You're talking about football Saturdays that are so meaningful across the landscape. You know, I, I think that's something that our fan base is really going to enjoy. I know the, the players and coaches on our team are looking forward to the challenge of testing ourselves against some of the most storied programs in the history of college football. 
but now as we all know this is a pro market and the fan base in this market wants an event and when you play in the Big Ten every week is a major event and I think the fans are going to show up to support it. So here are the home games Penn State Michigan Wisconsin Indiana do you expect to see a lot of red for those games Kyle we expect them to be sold out and I think a couple of those games are already sold out I don't know what's quite been released just yet but you know we're certainly looking forward to hosting that team from Pennsylvania on the evening of September 13th at right. 8 o'clock and, and uh, all the other teams that are going to come to Piscataway as well. But we've got a lot of work to do. We've got some good teams on our schedule that aren't in our conference, starting with Washington State less than two weeks away. When I look at the Big Ten road schedule, I say this is going to be a tall task. This is going to be a challenge. When you see the look of those teams at Ohio State, at Nebraska, at Michigan State, at Maryland, does that strike fear in you and your program? It doesn't. And when we recruited every one of these players, we recruited them with the with the thought that we're going to be a championship football program. And to be a championship football program, you got to compete against the best. And week in and week out, we're going to do that. And we can't wait. Your quarterback is Gary Nova. He's back for his senior year, a local kid from Don Bosco Prep. He's thrown for 51 touchdowns in his career, over 6,000 yards. But when I watched him at practice the other day, it looked like he took a big step going into camp this year. Is that true? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I think you can look directly at the relationship that he's built with our new offensive coordinator, Ralph Friedgen, you know, one of the great teachers of football and coaches of the quarterback position of the last 25 years. And I think he's built a great relationship with Ralph. I think he's learned a lot from his experiences of the past, the last three seasons. And now in his final season with us, we're really looking for big things out of Gary. Decision making has been something that's plagued him from time to time throughout his career. He's got 39 interceptions. How does he improve in that area? I think it's just a matter of going out to the practice field every day and making better decisions. And we saw that. We saw it through spring practice where over the course of 15 <laughs> we lost our cookies. Oh, we lost some of our cookies, <laughs> but that's the way sports final goes. It Go happens ahead. sometimes. But, you know, over the course of 15 practices in the spring, he threw one interception. So that was a great step in the right direction. And then he had a great summer program, did an excellent job of leading our team through an offseason, and was voted captain again, you know, by his peers. He'll be a two-time captain at Rutgers. And now he's had a great training camp so far. And we've got about 10 days left to, uh, to continue to get better before we go out west. Take me back to Ralph Friedgen. You know, when you watch him peruse the practice field, it's like a professor is at work in the laboratory. Is that fair? It, it is. <laughs> and, and there's really nothing that he hasn't seen. And somebody had said that to me after I had hired Ralph, that you know, no matter what the other team lines, in, lines up in, Ralph has seen it, and Ralph's got the answer for it. And he's been a great asset to me, not just as an offensive coordinator, but as somebody who was a head coach at Maryland for 10 years and had a lot of success. So he's a tremendous resource for me on the head coaching side as well. And it had to show some confidence in yourself to bring in a guy who's been a head coach at the collegiate level because it's got to show the fact that you're confident in your own abilities. I only saw it as a positive. I think the, the best thing you can do as a leader is, so, is surround yourself with really talented people. And there's no doubt that when you talk about really talented people, Ralph Regions at the top of that conversation. Defensively, you've got a guy named Darius Hamilton. He's the son of Keith Hamilton, who played 12 years for the Giants. I think a lot of the pro football fans in the area remember Keith. Darius has taken a big step as a junior, also a Don Bosco prep kid. He had 48 tackles last year, 11 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, but he's taken a big step. And as good as he was last year, I think if you took a snapshot, of the last third of the season he really elevated his game and when we recruited Darius he came to Rutgers with a lot of fanfare and a lot of expectations and what we started to see at the end of last season was the dominating defensive lineman that we knew he had recruited and he had another guy who had a tremendous offseason has had an excellent training camp so far and we really feel like the sky's the limit for Darius also voted captain by his peers so not only is he doing it on the field for himself, he's leading the others in the program. Now, what is this club ice all about? Because you know about the ice bucket challenge. Everyone's talking about the ALS ice bucket challenge. But after practice, you guys ice down in those tubs. And yet the other day, there was something that was brought out called club ice. Whose idea was this? And is this supposed to be a discotheque, Kyle? Well, club ice started <laughs> as, as an idea or a way to, to really just juice up what is a monotonous ordeal every day after practice. It's camaraderie, right? You got to go in the ice tubs. It, it, it helps get your legs back. It helps heal your body. There, there are a lot of physical positives to doing it. So it really happened in stages. First, we added the music, and then my director of operations, Will Gilkerson, a former captain at Rutgers, came to me, and he said, 
you know, I think we've got an idea. I think we've got something that the boys will really enjoy. And he gave me the idea, and first it was lights, and then they added the smoke, and the next thing you know, we had club ice, and apparently it's a national sensation. It's good that big-time college football can be fun, too, because isn't that what it's all about for kids? I don't think you And ever, educational. I don't think you ever want to forget that we're still playing a game, and these are still college student-athletes, and they should enjoy it. Have a great year, Coach. It starts on August 28th at Washington State. We'll be watching you closely. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, Bruce. That's Kyle Flood of Rutgers, the 29th head football coach on the banks of the old Raritan. He won more games than any rookie head coach in Rutgers history back in 2012 and was named Big East Coach of the Year. Coming up next, the Yankees salvage a tough road trip. But it's time now for the Sin City Play of the Day. And while the 49ers unveil their brand new home, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, it was Peyton Manning who stole the show. The reigning NFL MVP was 12 for 14 for 102 yards, including the 17-yard aerial strike to his tight end, Julius Thomas. At least one Manning is clicking on all cylinders right now. And that's the play of the day brought to you by Sin City, a dame to kill for in theaters everywhere this Friday.